CNN is assembling a crack team dedicated to save us from a world of misinformation. Oh, thank goodness. But even President Biden knows cable news ratings are tanking almost as fast as his approval. During his briefing with reporters this week, Biden called out the networks for losing viewership. Let's watch. A lot of the speculation in the polling data shows that the um, that the uh, cables are heading south. They're losing viewership. No? Well, Fox is okay for a while, but it's not gated. And a lot of the rest are predicted to be not very much in the, in the mix in the next four to five years. I don't know whether that's true or not. You should have called them low energy, too. <laughs> low energy, <laughs> fake news. Useful Idiots co-host and host of the Katie Halper Show, Katie Halper, joins us to discuss. Welcome back, Katie. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, so is is Joe Biden right? Are they headed south? I mean, it seems like they all are. And I think we'll get to another story, which may explain why uh, shortly. But, yeah, I don't know why he actually made that point. I'm, I'm not sure what his point was. Um, but he seems to be picking up on the fact that uh, media is losing credibility. A little late, but I guess better late than never. This is my number one reason for not wanting Trump to run or reenter politics or be ever seen from or heard from again. It's not actually because of my great concern for like the state of the country, but because I couldn't bear to see cable news ratings reverse themselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is one thing. I mean, who, uh, who was it who said that Trump was great for ratings? CBS? I think they've oh, all, I think they, 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 they've all it's said just so all true. They've right? all admitted it yeah. behind but the doors. There was one early. There was Zucker. there was one early yeah. person. Was Je- that yeah. was Jeff. That was Jeff Zucker. Yeah, yeah. the person most res- more responsible than anyone for yeah. making uh, right. Trump thrusting com- Trump upon us. Trump coming yeah. back would be a little nightcap uh, before yeah. the before cable goes completely to sleep. Right. Well, I mean, they're addressing it by like having a cool, useful show with Nicole Wallace, apparently, yes. that all the kids are supposed <laughs> to watch on Peacock or yeah. So they have their finger it, on the pulse. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it even odd that the U.S. president would even mention this or bring this up? I mean, wh- what is the point of that? You know, why would the president put that on his, his agenda to discuss know. in his first press conference in, what, 10 months? Like, you'd think I that mean, there were other pressing oh, things to talk about. I know why he's about. doing it. He's trying to say we're not like it's not just the government that's uh, that's losing. It's not just the presidency that isn't doing well. The media isn't doing well either. He's trying to kind of. Uh, uh, oh, gee, it's all of us relative. with an establishment yeah, exactly. narrative. Oh, it's yeah. a little, little mimicking of the former president. I yeah. mean, th- that guy yeah, spent 99 percent of his time talking about the media. His f- remember, his first famous press conference was just a giant fight. You're fake news. Just a giant fight with the media. <laughs> and so uh, Biden's doing it in his own way, like a halting yeah. Like, I don't know if it's true. It must be more more fun. I know. Maybe what it's was more that? fun to fight with the true. media than with, like, the members of the other political team because, I don't know, it's just too... Yeah. What are you going to do? Like, they hate you. They're not going to give you anything you want. It's not fun. Like, there's, <laughs> it's, it's more combative and entertaining when it's with the media. Right. It was less... Well, I, I want to give a shout-out to Les Moonves. That was who I was thinking of from CBS, uh, uh, who early on gave Trump a, uh, right. a shout-out for helping the ratings. Who's yeah. been me too into retirement. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah. the one right, well, couldn't remember his name. Go ahead, Cam. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, well, I just wanted to mention, first of all, that with Trump, you know, when he did those first those in his first um, few months in office and he was pointing out the fake news, I think many of us were very shocked. And I know I was one of those people that I was like, oh, my gosh, he's attacking journalists. What is he doing? You know, this is really awful. And then as time has gone on, I mean, now I'm sitting in a position where I'm like, ah, but he was right. You know, they are like they do spread a lot of, you know, they, they are often more propaganda than they are news. And so. You know, there was something to that. But um, but we course, do have the another moment. attack on journalists was comes from Trump in the form of his treatment of Assange, which was then, of course, continued yeah. by Joe Biden. So they have that in common also. Their right. total persecution Absolutely. of Assange and the uh, attack on free press and the First Amendment. Uh, but we do Not have another moment that we want to. Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, we do have another moment that we want to play back for you. It looks like Biden was only uh, able to call on an approved list of reporters. Let's take a look at that. Um, The uh, 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 Allison Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. 
can't he just write it on his hand or something so it's less <laughs> obvious? Can he like yeah, have Obama it? Used, it Obama used to do that too. Like the, the approved list is the people in the room, right? Like that's not an. Yeah. Didn't did Trump used to be? He did, occasionally did like a. You wait, no, not you. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it was like a reality TV show. Yeah. It was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Here we are, missing, yeah. wishing, you know, just like the thinking back to the days of Trump. I mean, no, I know. This world. is exactly what we're doing. This is why he has to, he can't do it. He can't, he satisfies a craving that, uh, that uh, cable news has yeah. that we don't, I don't want to see. I, it's for that. entertainment. We just yeah. want to be entertained. And Joe and, Biden puts us all to sleep. And Trump makes us all alert and, uh, you yeah. know, alarmed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Trump, would, and Trump would obsess over ratings, too. Like, he would use right. his sources to get access to, like, internal ratings and then tweet about, you know, right. the very precise ratings. He would, he would get into demographics. Like, he, he would wow. get into it like a, like a complete and total cable news junkie comparing the, you know, the, the, the demo and the 7 o'clock to the demo That's and the so 7 funny. o'clock from Fox yeah. to CNN. And then, you know, comparing his own numbers to say, like, let's say he was up against the World Series, he'd be super excited if he could beat. He's the a World television Series. star. He, that's right. He's, he's, he's a television he figure. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. He would, and there's he, a, yeah. there's but there's another story that I don't know if you guys are are aware of or talking about today. But I was I was looking at it about CNN. Did you see this? Things no, may really change. Oh, so CNN is now hiring a position for a um, basically someone to folk. They're they're creating a whole beat, a misinformation beat. Oh, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Did you guys not hear about this? Yeah. So uh, they they tweeted this out. This is kind of amazing. Um, They tweeted out uh, a a thread. Alex Alex Koppelman tweeted out, um, I'm hiring three people for a new CNN team dedicated to covering misinformation. Thread about the team job starts here. Please feel free to share far and wide. And if you're interested, reach out or apply at links. What do we mean by covering misinformation? Really, it's about covering reality, the uses, abuses, and distortions of it, the people twisting it, and the effect that it has on all of us. We already do a lot of important work on this. We want to do more. So I'm really excited for CNN to cover itself. <laughs> uh, what should well, be doing and, and it's covering the, misinformation? You know, the, the fact-checking industry or, or category of journalism has become one of the least um, uh, reliable or, right. or, or you know, the biggest joke of all, these right. very selective, like, and, and they treat it as if oh, we're, we're taking a break from what we normally do, but this is a fact check. Everyone, right. you know, pay close attention. This is the important stuff. And then it's some lame or stupid or misleading uh, thing. And it's so it tends to be more partisan and more biased right. than like other aspects of coverage. Yeah, and it's yeah. so dangerous because as you're saying, they present it as objective. It's just based on stats, just based on numbers, right? Uh, just calling balls and strikes. And as uh, always happens, you know, you get to choose what statistics you cite. You get to choose what studies you cite. So they're incredibly ideologically informed. They're incredibly subjective. They're incredibly partisan, as you said. And, you know, Glenn Kessler is such a joke. I mean, how many times has he proved that he has a major bias? I mean, he did this, Lord knows, uh, constantly when Bernie Sanders was in the race. I mean, he, he couldn't. He obviously and I think can't he's the best guy. fact checker I can think of, actually. Oh, well, that's a terrible statement. <laughs> he's the one that's I like the best. Statement. Yeah, that's a terrible yeah, statement. The New York Times used to have an ombudsman, which was, you know, an, an independent person who would right. only basically write about the New York Times and from a critical kind of adversarial right. perspective. And one of the deals that you took, if you took the job as the ombudsman, was that you would never work for the New York Times ever in your life, which is, which is important because you don't want right. the ombudsman kind of sucking up to the editors and then right. trying to get a job later at the Times. Mm-hmm. When, they, when they eliminated that position, they said, our readers are, are going to be our ombudsman. And yeah, that works really well. They sort yeah. of are, and that's the problem, because their readers have a very strong liberal bias. And right. if so, if the Times publishes something that the readers don't like, they start this hashtag of everybody get rid of your New York Times subscription. And it, internally, they do reckon with that. And I, I think that's the micro example of what's happening more broadly yeah. of these networks. Uh, both, you know, propagandizing to their audience, but also being dragged around by the nose by their audience. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. 
But yeah. the question is also oh. how you even know that how how like someone would even. I mean, I guess to be fair, there was like that famous example where they engaged in this ridiculous stealth edit in their article about Bernie Sanders, right? They changed the headline so they made it yes. less flattering. They inserted critical passages. They deleted passages that were at all flattering of Sanders. And that was something that originated online, that someone caught that, and they did screenshots and they compared it. And then that the there was such a loud response to that that the public editor, the, the ombudsman or the public editor had to actually respond and did did indeed come down on the side against the New York Times, called it out, called out the stealth editing, which is when you make edits without even acknowledging it. You don't even update that any changes were made. So, of course, they had to get rid of that role. I, yeah. yeah, I well, can't believe major publications get away with stuff. They do it all the time. They do. I when I get something wrong, I put a. I'm required. I put a. Yeah. I have to fix it. I have to put in a you know a humiliating correction. I'm sorry. I'm the biggest moron who's ever lived. Kind of description. <laughs> yeah. And they don't do that. Or right. They get caught not doing that all the time. I mean, well, I think it's a place good... bet that we all end up on CNN's uh, fake news yeah, list. Seriously. I'm sure I'll well, be first, but all of us are going to get hit at some point. I think point. you're already there, Kim. I think, uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I think it's good timing on their part that they created this uh, misinformation, disinformation beat after they got rid of Chris Cuomo, because it would have been pretty <laughs> awkward if they had done it while good he was point. there. Well, it would um, be good yeah. if, it, if, if they would hire somebody independent who would pledge never right. to work at, the, at CNN in the future, and, who right. just who just covered CNN content. They should that hire that fired New York yeah. Times yeah. person. You know what I mean? They should hire the last ombudsman or uh, ombudswoman mm. uh, public editor <laughs> from the New York Times, because she's free now. She doesn't have a gig, she's, at least at the New York Times. Yeah, she's, person. she's at the Washington ombudsman Post, person. but the, Post, oh, has like the five, Post? Post has like five media critics. They can spare one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, right. we got yeah. we to gotta wrap. Katie, thank you and so much for joining us. And CNN. One thing, just their, late, their latest thing, just one e easy example is, uh, of course, they they had a photo of a rally in Miami, which they pretended was a rally in Cuba. Just That's just one example. There's so many <laughs> other examples, but that's one piece of inf misinformation they could correct right away. They could report on. I'm sure they'll get right on that. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Bye. And we'll be back with more Rising in just a minute.